listening to Petrified. This episode, he's behind you. Hiya, Keith. How's Doreen? Stage Doreen. Where's the sign-in sheet, my Dublin flower? You're the first in. Oh, hold on. Here's a pen. Thank you, my love. Good to have you back. Busy house tonight? We're sold out, as you well know. Always are with you. Oh, there's nothing like a dame. What has you in at this ungodly hour of the afternoon? I'm in to give that Janet a piece of my mind. The bloody Queen of Hearts wig keeps slipping down for the final dance. It's far too heavy. If that monstrosity just plops off my head onto the stage, the kids will be screaming. A washed up 50 year old sweating in a gown. If you're washed up, I don't know what the rest of us are. <laughs> you're diamonds, my lamb. All of you. Even if the wig pops off, you're a fine looking man. It'll be the mothers who are screaming. Oh, I'd prefer if it was the fathers. You're actually the image of my father. And how old is he? 80. Ah, stop. Are you staying for the party after the show? It's either that or spend New Year's on my Todd Doreen. No clubbing for me anymore. Panto comes first. And we've all got tomorrow off. So I expect to see you up on a table. Will you stop? The table will collapse under me. Right so. Off to read the bell, Janet the Riot Act. Keith, can I ask you... You always lock your dressing room door when you go and put the key in the box, right? Now, Doreen, after ten years, come on. That's sorry, I know, I know. Sure I have to protect my Fabergé egg collection? (laughs) Very good. Now, it's just, there always seems to be a few keys short in the box. Are you all right, my love? Ah, yeah. Just a few weird things happening. (laughs) It's probably Billy. Oh, don't say that. I'd be terrified locking up. Get you home quicker, so. Go on. Where, in the name of God, is he? This is madness. This is your 15 minute call. Christ on a wheel. Come in. Come in. Mr. Mr. Handler? Can I help you, pet? It's Maisie. I'm one of the dancers. Very good. I don't know your face. I'm I'm in the background of the hedge maze scene. I, I'm one of the playing cards. Five of clubs. Is that right? Did you hear it was the 15 minute call, Marie? Maisie. Yes, yeah, sorry. I, I just wanted to say I was sorry for getting the choreography wrong. I got in your way a bit when you were chasing the white rabbit. Now I remember you. Nearly ended up on top of you. I just wanted to say it won't happen again. I've gone over it and over it all day. (laughs) Do you not think it's a bit late three weeks into the run to be going over it, Pigeon? Uh, I'm an an understudy. I replaced Sharon. Oh, what happened to Sharon? Oh, don't you know? My darling, I'd say we're at the ten minute call now and I can't find my damn lips. She, she lost an eye, Mr. Handler. What? How? Her engagement ring fell off on stage. She went to grab it after the show. Someone had turned off the backstage lights. The King of Hearts scepter was just sticking out of one of the hedges at a weird angle and she she just walked straight into it. It jammed right into her eye and her... It just popped. Why didn't I hear about this? I'll send her flowers. Can, can I... Buy you a drink at the party tonight? It's a free bar, darling. But you have a tip-top show, all right? All right. That poor girl. Oh, I can't imagine. (gasps) Are you completely taking the absolute piss? What do you want? Hello? Oh. There's my lipstick on the floor. Doreen? Doreen? This is your five minute call. Oh. I'll tell you something for nothing, Alice Patricia Margaret Wonderland. If you think you can come in here and call us a pack of cards and get to keep that head attached to your neck, you're as mad as a hatter. And what's wrong with being as mad? 
is me! Oh, well, I'm mortified. <laughs> but who are you making a show of me? And where's that white rabbit gone, boys and girls? He was right there. He was right What's that? He was right I can't hear a word you are saying. Oh, get these high heels off me. I'm not able. <gasps> oh. Doreen, Doreen, Doreen! Jesus, Key, what are you screaming for? <gasps> oh, oh my God. What am I screaming for? Would it be because the dressing room is covered in glass from a smashed mirror? Who was in here? The place is destroyed. I was here all the time up at the stage door. No one came down the corridor past me. No one. Mr. Handler, you were brilliant tonight. So funny. Well, somebody did it, Doreen. There's glass all over my things. I could have been cut to bits. <gasps> what happened? I swear to God, Key. <sighs> That's bad. Don't, Don't whistle, whistle in, in a theatre. Why shouldn't I? No one passed me. Then it must have been Billy. Who's Billy? It's a ghost, you and I, in little twist. It's the theatre ghost. Doreen, get someone to clean this up. I'm going to the green room bar. Oh, what a night. Oh, no. Hey. Hey, Sandy. Come here for a minute. It's Maisie. Maisie. Sorry. I won't forget again. I'm also sorry for shouting at you, pet. You were very stressed. It's okay. You were fantastic in the show. Five stars for the five clubs. I didn't trip over you once. Mm, that's something, I suppose. You must be sweating in that costume. I can't change until they get all the glass out of the dressing room. Insurance. Your makeup is kind of hilarious. Sweat it off my head. Believe me, I've looked a lot worse going on stage sometimes. Anyway, perfect opportunity to buy me that drink you offered earlier. I thought it was a free bar. Oh, not till 10.30. Now, I know you're on the chorus salary, so I'll only have a gin and tonic. I did promise. <laughs> right oh, <laughs> Mr. Hander, why can't I whistle in a theatre? In the olden days, the stage crews they hired used to be sailors between jobs. They'd communicate by whistling to each other up in the riggings, changing the big heavy sets between scenes. So if you came along whistling your own little ditty, you could confuse them. A huge set might come in too soon, kill someone. Good enough reason? Death is a good enough reason. Gin and tonic it is. Cheers, big ears. You've been doing panto for a few years now, right? Yep. Started out as a principal boy, the Aladdins, the Robin Hoods. Then I got older, a little plumper, and I was never very chisel jawed to begin with. So one year after playing the Sultan, I was asked to be Aladdin's mother. Stick around long enough, you age into the background. So what other superstitions do they have in the theatre? The M word, of course, the Scottish play. What? Macbeth? Ah, no! Oh. Then break a leg, of course. Or there's toy, 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 and you knock on wood. And the ghost light. That's what was turned off when that poor child took her eye out. Not the backstage light. The ghost light is turned on as the last person leaves. It lights up the edge of the stage. And it never goes off. Is it for Billy? No. It's so you don't walk off the stage and break your neck. It's got nothing to do with ghosts. But who is Billy? Our resident haunter. Every great theatre has a ghost. The Theatre Royal Drury Lane in London has the man in grey. A dark figure who walks around the upper circle. The New Amsterdam Theatre and the Palace in New York are both riddled with spectral beings. The Palace Garnier, of course, has box number five for the Phantom of the Opera. And we have Billy. The ghost of the Stella Grand. Indeed. As far as can be believed, he was a real person. Not just a made-up thing. Was he a little boy? 
Is that why he wrecks things? I can just picture a tiny little ghost in frilly bloomers. Uh, Nothing wrong with frilly bloomers. They've kept me employed the last ten years. (sighs) No, unfortunately we are not haunted by the playful spirit of a little lad. Our Billy was an adult. And a multiple murderer. Yikes. Indeed. He had a thing for chorus girls. I bet you're sorry you asked now. How long ago was this? Huh? The late 1800s, so he's well dead. (laughs) Our Billy worked as a stagehand, a rigger, one of those people who whistled to each other. Our story begins on New Year's Eve. One of the dancers was Shut up! You're lying! It was not New Year's Eve. It was. (laughs) It really was. As I was saying before you so rudely interrupted, a young dancer was found in the orchestra pit when the morning staff came in, neck broken. The ghost light was out. They thought she'd fallen in the dark, hadn't seen where the stage ended and the drop began. Someone was fired. The story was hushed up quickly in case it affected ticket sales and that was it. All wrapped up and done with. Except it wasn't. Or else we'd have no ghost. The next girl was a melancholy little thing. Prone to unrequited crushes. Moping around all forlorn. So when she was found hanging from a rope in the wings, everyone thought they knew the reason why. Except when they cut her down, there were bruises in the shape of hands underneath the rope marks. That's when the real panic set in. Could the first dancer's demise have actually been a murder? The theatre manager told the stagehands present not to say a word until they knew more. There was a big show opening the week later and they couldn't have an uproar. If there had been any doubts, the third girl cemented suspicions. This time the killer didn't even try to hide it. She was sprawled across the set tongue hanging out he'd even gouged out one of her eyes this has suddenly become a rather disturbing ghost story oh there's one more horrible tidbit before we wrap up lucky number three was found just before opening night the actors naturally refused to go on There were riots outside. People had paid good money to see the biggest show of the season. Crowds demanded their ticket money back, forcing their way into the theatre. Rumpus ensued. In the midst of all the clamour, the leading lady went to her dressing room to gather her essentials, jewels, perfume, furs, etc., as her carriage waited outside. She was, of course, as you'd expect because I brought her up, stabbed to death in her dressing room mutilated with a shard of broken glass. Well, doesn't that sound familiar? What? Oh. (gasps) Oh, my. Oh, you frighten yourself now, haven't you? I certainly have. Click, click, click. All the cogs tumble into place. What a coinky jink. They caught old Bill, right? More found than caught. Slashed his own throat. Sat high up in the circle, looking down on the stage. A confession laid gently on the seat beside him like a programme. So he can watch the shows forever. If he wasn't mad before, he would be now. The panto, 80 times in a season. I'm good, but I'm not that good. Keith, sweetheart, the dressing room is clean. All the glass is gone. Except for one little shard bound to go into my foot. (laughs) Did you figure out how it was done? They think something might have slammed down on the floor above and knocked something loose in your room. No. A likely story. We know what it was, don't we, Keith? You wicked little monster. Right, well, I'm off to get changed as fast as humanly possible. Hurry back, the free bar is opening soon. Ow. Ow. When the final curtain drops, I'm going to burn you shoes and do a barefoot jig as you go up in flames. 
What in the name of God was that? Doreen? Mick? Uh, what's your name? Uh, uh, Tony? Maybe it's whatever thumped upstairs and broke the mirror. A bulb. Hey. Tony. A bulb has gone in the corridor. Hello. There's no bloody windows, so if they all go, there'll be an accident. Feck that. Who locked this? Who locked my door? Hello? God. God! Oh, calm down. Calm down. It's only a few bulbs. They locked your dressing room after they cleaned it because of the glass. Just slide along the wall till the next dressing room. That will be unlocked. Jason? Is that you? Or whatever your name is, playing the dormouse. Who's there? Who's there? Who's there? You are not funny. This is harassment, and I'll have you booted out of the show. Don't mess with the lead. Is there someone in one of the dressing rooms? <laughs> yes, there is. Be careful. The bulbs in the corridor went. We'll have them replaced in a minute. Did you see anyone outside this room? Get the torch out of my face, please. Oh, sorry. No, just heard you roaring. Do you have the key to the dressing room next door? Yeah, it was full of glass. We had to clean it up. Just open it, please. Hey. Hey, Maisie. Keith, all scrubbed up. You missed a few bits. You have makeup everywhere. I wasn't hanging around. You spooked yourself with that story, didn't you? Someone was acting the mick. But yes, I suppose it was mostly that. Get yourself a drink. Oh, yeah. It's a free bar now. Okay, this round on me. Can't say I didn't get you back. We're a party animal. Oh, I need the bathroom. <laughs> just hold it. Don't turn on the main light. Just the lamp. The room looks so weird without the mirror. Oh, now where's that medicinal vodka I keep in the room? Get me a big one. I need medicine. Here's cups. Why don't we just go to the nightclub? Dorian and I are older than dirt, my dear. Oh, and we're not going to the nightclub with all the youngsters. We'll just have a couple more here to wet the New Year's head and then we call it quits. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Click off the light quick. Anyone here? Locking up. Locking up now. Your grandpa. I have kids. <laughs> Turning the lights off. Locking up. You! You two mouths nearly got us caught. I need a vodka for me nerves, quick. <laughs> Are you going to give us a song, Doreen? Oh, I have a powerful voice, Keith. We better let the security leave first. I'm a belter. Why aren't you up on the stage then, Celine? <gasps> Doreen Dion. <laughs> Wouldn't want to make a show of you with me, talent. <laughs> oh. Wouldn't be hard with your man. <laughs> yeah, you should be on stage. The one that's leaving at noon. I don't get it. It's like a stagecoach. Stick to the scripts, Keith. <laughs> Top us all up there. You know there's Mixer. God, no. Wouldn't touch the stuff. And that's it. We're locked in. <laughs> Have the place to ourselves. Just the three of us. 
and Billy. Stop, Maisie. It's not funny. I wasn't trying to be. You think it was him who chased you in the dark. When were you chased? I was drunk when I told you that, Maisie, you mouth. Aw, oh, telling ghost stories, were you? I thought I heard someone in the dark when the bulbs blew. I love ghost stories. <gasps> so do I. <laughs> this is no crack, serious. I even have a ghost story. Well, a spooky one. Go on, so. Nope. Ah, turn your lamp back on, you big wimp. I need to top up. Don't we all? Imagine if we had to work tomorrow, we'd be crying. Come on then, Maisie. Tell it if you're telling us. All right. <laughs> Are you sitting comfortably, children? Ooh, move over on the chair, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> when I was 15, I went on a dance scholarship to London. Oh, very fancy. Not really. The school was a tip. Run down, dust everywhere. It was probably fancy in its heyday, but those times were obviously long gone by the time I started. That's why they took you. Well... <laughs> Isn't he gas, Doreen? <laughs> Not a shrink and violet when you have a drink on you. Oh, shut up. Anyway, I was there about a week and I was going to have my first one-on-one -on -one with Madame de Maurier. Ooh, sounds French. I think she was from Newcastle, actually. <laughs> I was to go to her practice room in the North Extension. Well, as you can tell from me walking in front of you during the hedge maze scene, Keith, I'm not great with my directions. You nearly broke my neck. No loss. Wherever I ended up was not the North Extension. I went down the end of this empty hallway and there didn't seem to be anyone in this part of the school. And I opened what I thought was Madame de Maurier's practice room and it was full of dolls. Wow. All these old porcelain dolls sitting against the wall, lining the room. There must have been at least a hundred. And in the middle of the room was a tea party. Three dolls sitting around a tiny table with little cups and saucers, a little teapot. The dolls were leaning in like they were looking at something. And in the middle of their table was what looked like a photograph turned upside down. What do you think I did? Legged it. No. I turned over the photograph. Where was it? It was a photograph taken through a window, like the person was in a room and took a photo of what was outside. And outside the window was a group of young girls. Students, same age as me, but this was an old photo. They were all gathered on the lawn. But each of their faces were scratched out, like violently scratched out. And as I looked at the photograph, I heard like a chink, I suppose you'd call it, like the sound two pieces of porcelain make when they hit against each other. I turned around, but there were only dolls. But when I turned, I saw a window and I walked across to it and looked out and it was the exact patch of lawn that was in the photograph. The picture had been taken from that room. And then a chair scraped against the floor. Oh, good night. I turned around again, but nothing had moved. And as I stood there frozen, something smacked against the window behind me. And what was that? I couldn't tell you. I took off out of the room like there was a rocket under me. I got told off later because I'd missed Madame de Maurier's class, but I never said why. I didn't want anyone to know I'd been in that room, and I never went there again. Never had reason to. All the classes were in the North Extension, which I discovered later was the complete other side of the building, so there we go. Just thought that was creepy. It is. Cool. So are we going to have a sing-song now? Oh no, it's my turn. I have a scary story. Here we bloody go. Oh, can I go to the toilet, please? I think I'm going to burst. My one's busted. If you flush it, it just fills up. The nearest one is down the end of the hall and turn left and then down the end again. Do you have a light in your phone? They didn't change those bulbs, yeah? And do you know where your left is? Uh-huh. Mine Billy doesn't get you. 
Oh, don't let him know you're a dancer. No high kicks. Blah, blah, blah. Nice young one. Well, I might as well tell you my story while she's gone. And we can get the party started when she comes back. It's all about what I thought was my imaginary friend, Daniel. What you thought? Oh, you'll see. Well, my dad was a big drinker. Oh, great. The one you said I look like. Big whiskey nose, has he? Stop now. I told you he was a very handsome man. Now, he may have been a looker, but he was a pig. Used to hit me, ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, my love. It's grand. He's dead now. Used to hit us kids as well, me and my sister. We've moved into a new house. Hold on, that's gussying it up. We've been kicked out of our old house because the daddy not paying the rent. An awful kip we ended up in. Think we got a cheap because someone had died in there only the week before? Oh, I can sense where this is going. <laughs> right. So, when daddy got all shouty and started smashing stuff, I'd hide up in the small back bedroom and I made friends with Daniel. I never saw him, of course, but sometimes I could hear him. Of course, it was all in my head. A poor, frightened little young one. But I imagined him saying that I was his and that he would always take care of me. Not now did the ordinary there. What else would a little kid imagine their imaginary friend telling them? But it started to seem like he actually did. One night, Daddy was up in his room and he'd had a fill of drink and was looking for trouble. He started to roar my name. He decided whatever had happened in his head, it was my fault. I was shivering in the back bedroom, sitting there, waiting for him to come and get me. I heard him getting up, crossing the room, starting to open his door, and he stopped. The door wouldn't open. Who locked this, he says. I could hear him banging and banging, but he couldn't get out. Well, by the time Mammy found the key, he'd passed out drunk on the bed. No one had a clue who moved the key and why it reappeared on the table that Mammy had already checked. It happened twice more. Once the room I was in was locked and Daddy couldn't get in. I was sure it had been unlocked, but I was delighted it wasn't. The last time Daddy had kicked off again. I was in the garden, but he thought I was in the house. No one else was home. I heard him waking up and calling me again. And he went into the back bedroom and slammed the door. And then I heard screaming in serious pain. I flew up the stairs and tried to push open the door, but Daddy was lying up against it, not moving. I was too small to push him. And then blood ran out from under the door. Jesus, Doreen. He'd fallen or something on top of this big fancy vase that'd been in the house when we moved in. There was a lump of glass sticking out of his chest. He was dead. My God. I can't say we were all that upset. We moved out of the house. In with me Nana for a few months before we get our own place. When I was about 14, I did a bit of investigating and it turns out someone had died in the house before we moved in. Someone with a history of mental problems. Someone incredibly violent. Now, that should probably have put the chills up me. But I remember Daniel saying that he would take care of me. Maybe it's best I told that while the young one was gone. It's a bit bleak. I'm awful sorry to hear about all that happening to you, love. Do you want to tell your story now? Me? Sure, I just have Billy. And we know all about him. You don't really believe there's something haunting the Stella Grand, do you? She's gone an awfully long time, isn't she? <laughs> Maisie! What's wrong with your love? Here, sit down, sit down. I was... I was... In the bathroom and I... I was thinking about what you told me, Keith, about, about the ghost lies. And I wanted to see it, just to have a look. So I... So I turned on my phone to use the light and I went up and... There's nothing... It's all dark. That Simpleton security guard never turned it on when he left. I'll go up and do it now. Don't. Don't go up there. Why not? Someone put his hand on my neck. Oh, Jesus. Doreen, there's nobody else in the building, is there? We know who it is. It's B. 
Billy. Stop now, love, stop. He's after me because I'm a dancer. I'm telling you, there's something in this theatre. The smashed mirror, Sharon's eye, someone ran at me in the dark. And the two of you are just drunk and being ridiculous. I want to go home. We should all go home. Come on, get your stuff. That's the most sensible thing you've said all night. Put on the hall lights. The switch is down the other end of the corridor. Hands on shoulders. Make a train. I'm in the middle. He's coming for me. Okay, okay. I know where the switch is. Let me go in front. Oh, what are you doing? I have to turn on the ghost. No, no. We're not going back there. I'll be in serious trouble. It's my job. Dory, keep going. If there's an accident, it'll be my neck. It'll be my neck. Give me two minutes. No! Two minutes! Come on. <laughs> I'll be so much quicker on me own. No way. Don't split up. Listen, if it is Billy, he doesn't want me. He wants her. <gasps> Shut up! You two go back into your dressing room. Keith, let me run. Oh, please. Please. Okay. Okay. We'll go into the dressing room and you run. Can you feel the wall? Yes. Here's the door. Then go in, Keith. Lead the way. I'm inside. <gasps> Someone touched my neck. Don't take your hands off my shoulders. <sighs> Who closed the door? Keith. <laughs> Open up. Why did you lock the door? I didn't. Get away from the door, Keith. Now. I can't see a thing. It's... Billy! It's not Billy. Daniel. Daniel, stop! It's not Daddy, Daniel. He's dead. It's not Daddy! Oh, God. My. Ah! He's Behind You was written and directed by Peter Dunn. It was edited and produced by Liam Garrity. It starred Dunica O'Dea, Margaret McAuliffe and Michelle McMahon. You can keep updated with all things Petrified on Twitter and Instagram at Petrified underscore pod. Petrified is funded by the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland with the television licence fee.